trying to get connected to the audio. We got an Amy in the house. That's pretty cool. We got two Amy's. Good too. Good, good. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I'm gonna mute myself. How about we just give it just a couple more minutes. I got a few 
regular attendees that I'm hoping pop in. But you know, in the meantime, you know, get a few things together, a block maybe, or a strap, beverage, notebook, pen. Definitely bring a smile. Welcome, Olivia. I think uh, first time seeing you. That's pretty cool. Glad you're here. Hey, Christina, welcome. Glad you're here. All right, if you would please make sure your device is set to speaker view so that the main image you're seeing is, well, me. Um, kind of gives everybody a little privacy if they wish. And then as far as your own personal camera, uh, my preference is that your camera is on. It helps me to be in the room with you and uh, helps me to select the cues that I use. But that's not a rule or a requirement. Ultimately, it's your choice what you do. If you wish to have the camera off, that's cool. Turn it off, no problem. Um, it is ideal if you can hear me. So I'm hoping that everybody, if you can uh, hear me, just hold up a hand or a foot or something. Let me know you're out there. All right. Olivia, can you hear me? All right, groovy. Good deal. So it's Monday morning and it's that time. Let's get started. Let's get started in a child's pose. If you're not familiar with child's pose, no problem. Just throw your hands and knees and push your seat back towards your heels. 
You can take your hands out in front of you if that's all right. Put your hands wherever you like, something comfortable. If this is a little too fragile on the morning knees, open knees wider, take some pressure off. That might help. And with that in mind, just understand that, uh, you know, I'm going to offer some suggestions today. No rules, no requirements. Just some suggestions, some creative ideas. And um, it's really your job to take these ideas, these suggestions, and fine tune them for you. That means if something hurts or your discernment tells you that that's not right, well, no problem. Just modify it or discard it. It kind of eliminates all the drama, right? But no rules, just a simple boundary of safety. And the nice thing is you're in charge of that boundary. Because yoga teacher doesn't really know a damn thing. Only you know what's going on with you. Now we're going to slide on into yoga mode. It takes a little patience. And we have a technique to do so. It uses breath. And here's how it goes. Here's your first suggestion. Begin to just breathe through your nose only. Only if that's appropriate for you. If it's not appropriate, don't do it. But if you can, your lips are together, but your teeth aren't touching because there's nothing to chew on right now. Air begins to move in and out the nostrils. You kind of just feel it. Feel the inner rings of your nostrils as air glides by. Then we begin to breathe fully through our nostrils. I mean, full inhales, complete exhales. Really explore the edges of your lung capacity. Use something down in your belly to help you move the air. And it's intentional. It's intentional because it requires your attention. I mean, we, don't, we don't run around through the day breathing like this. It takes some focused concentration. And if you're familiar with the eight limbs, we know that concentration is precursor to meditation. So now we have a, a very simple tool to help quiet our mind. And without that meditative mind state, we're just doing Eastern style calisthenics. But finally, begin to let the air move smooth and fluid. Sure, there'll be a brief pause at the top and the bottom. But just let it be natural, deep and fluid. And like it has an even tempo, same duration inhale, same duration exhale. So now our breath is focused, it's deep, full, and fluid. If somebody were to hear you breathing without seeing you sweat or in a pose, all they could all they could possibly conceive is that you're you're very calm. And that's your other boundary today, calmness. This breath right here is your your barometer. It lets you know meditative, calm mind state. If it becomes strained or choppy or anything other than full, rich, fluid, well, there you go. You know I'm no longer in my yoga. So take a moment, come back to deep, rich breath, and then just jump back in wherever we're at. And please, don't worry about missing poses. You know, sometimes we're brushing our teeth, we miss a tooth. No need for apoplectic meltdown. We just catch that, that tooth on the next round. As you're making your shift in the yoga, a couple of things to maybe consider throughout the practice. How about reactivity? As we become calm, we create some space between stimulus or action and impulsive reaction. Yoga don't want to change you. It just wants to turn on the lights so that you can see perhaps make an 
informed choice before impulsive reaction. We become a little more reflective. We find the flow. The second thing to consider as we go through these poses, creative transitions, sometimes we park for a few breaths in a pose. Whenever you find yourself parked, maybe you ask yourself, how many different triangles am I making right now? Pick three landmarks on your body and just kind of wonder, how many triangles can I find in this pose? A nice, calm state of mind. If you're with me, let's start doing some creative things. Reach your hands out long if they're not already there. Press your palms to the mat. Tuck your toes under and let an exhale bring your butt up high, your head down low. It's an upside down V. We call down dog pose. Yeah, first down dog. So take your time. Flirt with it a little bit. Get to know it for a moment. Have dinner with it. And then make some, some decisions on how deep, how long, just how far do you want to go in this relationship with this first pose? I mean, when we jump right into commitment, that's how we get in trouble. So take your time. Get to know something a little bit. Listen to your body. It's your sacred partner. It'll give you notifications. Here's a few refinements for down dog, if you wish. Palms pressing sweetly. Pretend your hands are on pickle jars. And that right hand, try to tighten that jar lid with your left hand, try to loosen that jar lid and notice any kind of sensation of muscles in armpits and ribs. Yeah. To drop your head and take a look at your thighs, your belly button, and notice your neck is now long. Roll some shoulder blades down so that your ears are clear of shoulders. The backs of your legs begin to press away through the entirety. Have press away with hamstrings, backs of knees, calves. And then let your heels fall wherever they fall. It don't matter if they touch the mat, if they don't touch the mat. What matters is what are you feeling? Some, some Achilles, some calf, back of the knee. And if there's room for it, a little bit extra, you can tilt your tailbone up sweetly and begin pressing armpits towards ankles. Now we you know you've got just about everything I can think of for a down dog. If anything gets a little too intense, you know your breath will change. You just practice a difficult muscle called humility. Take some knees, do a child's pose. Now in down dogs, let your next exhale lower your right knee to the mat directly below your right hip. Yeah. Now pivot your left foot flat, kind of like a warrior lunge. Lean into your right hand and breathe in. Take your left arm right up to the ceiling. So we just have the most gentle little side arm balance. It's a modified side plank. Bashi's awesome. Notice a little pressure into your right palm. Kind of ignites some musculature there. You can reach with your left hand and find some lengthening, open, pulling rib cage away from pelvis, there's some more lengthening. And pretty much with the spine, we're always looking to lengthen, right? Notice if you press into the sole of your left foot, what happens on your inner left thigh? A little, a little sweetness there, correct? One more inhale. Try to spread your chest open. Maybe touch that wall behind you with your left fingers. And exhale. Bring your left hand down to the mat right below your left shoulder and just lift your left leg behind you long as you please high as is appropriate for you maybe toes two inches off the mat maybe leg is lifted up parallel to the planet and with your left leg lifted personal degree start reaching your right arm forward bicep kind of right by your right ear 
Notice with breath, when you inhale, lungs lengthen, right? Then when you exhale, they contract. So in pose, an inhale lengthens hand and foot away from each other, reaching, creating traction. Skeleton loves that. And exhales, you can press into your left palm and ignite some tricep, deltoid, pectoral. Nose pointing at the mat because we want length, right? Yeah, take another deep breath of air. Exhale, put hand and knee back on the mat. And we're just going to make a switch. Left knee stays below left hip. Step your right foot back. Pivot your right foot flat. Sole of foot connected like a suction cup. Lean into your left palm and let it inhale. Open your right hand up to the ceiling. Yeah. Just some creative movements, some interesting shapes. You know, nothing, nothing impressive. It's not Cirque du Soleil, but it sure does feel nice. Maybe finding a little challenge. Remember the refinements, press here, reach there, extend here. Breath guiding the movement. Just mimicking the action of your lungs. One more inhale. Let your chest spread open because it feels nice. Exhale your right hand back to the mat. Just lift your lift your leg up behind you. I guess that would be your right leg this time, wouldn't it? With your weight in your right hand, you take your left arm forward, bicep somewhere in the vicinity of your left ear. Nose is pointing at the mat. And now we just let breath do what it does. The inhales lengthening, extending, finding traction. Exhales pressing for a little contraction. Every movement creates stimulation. Stimulation creates circulation. Circulation creates regeneration. It's a sweet process. One more inhale, flirt with length and height. Now breathe out and set it all on the mat. Hands are below your shoulders. And step up both of your feet back so you're in an upper push-up position. Yoga speak is called plank or balakasana. I'm just kind of up on my hands and toes with long legs, deep breath, soft face. And did you know, anytime you find yourself in plank, you can set your knees down and still get the same benefit. It's just a little less intense. But it's up to you to pick and choose. I have no way of knowing what you need. One deep breath of air. With knees up or knees down, either way is cool. Exhale, bend your elbows as you lower with control. Feel your elbows and biceps, brush your ribs all the way down to the mat. Let the chin touch before the chest if you can. And all the way down, once you're flat, release the tops of your feet. All 10 toenails touching the plant. Hands remain where they are. Inhale, press into your palms. Straighten your arms as much as you can without lifting your thighs. This is a back bend called cobra. Exhale, come on back down. Chin touches the mat. We're going to do five. Inhale, come on up. There's cobra again. Just sweet and gentle. Exhale, back down. Chin touches. Inhale, let's get a third one. We're just pumping some energy into the back side of your body. Exhale, come on back down. Inhale, fourth cobra. And let your glutes be loose. No, no need to squeeze. Exhale, come on back down. Just take detour. Reach arms out wide like wings. You can have straight out to the sides or swept back like a jet airplane. On inhale, begin to lift arms, thighs, torso, but to a moderate degree. If you lift all the way up, you're going to blow out in about three breaths, and we're there for a few more than that. So moderation, somewhere between too much, not enough. Not chasing anything, not running from anything, just being still in something. Feel everything on the backside of your body. How about for this last two breaths, now play with height. Lift as high as you wish without pain, without force, without aggression. Exhale, hands back to cobra, rest your thighs, and inhale back up into that fifth cobra, I promised you. We'll stay here for five breaths. 
Now, remember we said a little bit of something about is the stimulus and the reaction? It's your glutes right now. Are they clenched or are they loose? You know, it's okay to clench them if you realize you're clenching them. At least you're making a conscious decision instead of a mindless reaction. Let the light shine. Make a choice. One more breath. Exhale, come on down. Chin touch, tuck toes under, push the plank. Same exhale to down dog pose. Yeah, now that's a, an entire push up. When we go plank, the cobra, the plank, the down dog, that's one full fancy push up. And uh, they're going to add up throughout the practice. And it might not be your thing. Anytime you like, you can just go directly from cobra to down dog and completely discard the push up. It's okay. From dog, begin to walk six inch increments. Walk your feet towards your hands. But, but, but every time you set your foot down, push into your heel and just stroke up your Achilles tendon, back of your knee. Each step, just getting a little touch to the back side of your leg. And there's no hurries. As your feet get closer to your hands, you may want to come up on your fingertips. Find that forward fold. They call it Uttanasana. Now, with hands down low, just inhale, glance forward, remove any rounding of your spine. It's Ardha Uttanasana. Doesn't mean you lift halfway, it just means you lengthen out fully. Now exhale, long spine fold. You can keep your hands down on the mat. You can grab your elbows if you wish. You know, you might want to reach around and grab the back of some calves or some ankles, because this is your Uttanasana. So find it. Pull your belly button to your spine will protect your low spine. Just a couple breaths here. Maybe, maybe shake your head yes and no. Maybe stick your tongue out and go, uh. We're still making that shift. Now, if you're with me, open your arms like wings. Pull your chest away from your thighs to a flat spine. Now, Big inhale, come up to standing. Top of your inhale, fingers are reaching up. You're looking up. A back bend if you decide it's appropriate. Exhale now, fold forward again. Bring your torso to your thighs, hands and head low. Inhale, glance forward. Remember, we lengthen. Breathing out, put your hands on the mat. You can step or quietly hop the plank. Same exhale, come on down with some strength, with some control. See if you can let your chin touch before your chest. Release toes. Breathe in. Catch you cobra. We just practiced it five times. Exhale. Chin touch. Push the plank. Same exhale to downward facing dog. You want Sanskrit? Adho Mukha Sanasana. Breathe. Now just take a moment to notice that breath is still here. All sorts of things were changing in your body, but one thing remained the same. It's your calmness as evidenced by deep, steady, fluid breathing. Yeah. Oh. Now, we went through a dress rehearsal. Let's kind of turn this into a little bit of that yogic tai chi, yogic dance. If you're with me, inhale, tilt your tailbone up. Over the exhale, walk or quietly hop your feet to your hands, never pouncing or jarring. Inhale, glance forward, lengthen out. Exhale, fold deep as you please. Arms like wings, flat spine. Inhale, rise, reach high, back bend if you decide. Exhale, take the big fold, bring nipples to thighs, head down low. Inhale, glance out a little length. Breathing out, hands to mat, step hop the plank to lower with strength. Sweet cobra on an inhale. Exhale, chin touch, press into the mat, plank to down dog. Maybe starting to develop a, just the beginnings of some heat. But, uh, you know, we got the time for it, so let's make sure. Let's do just one more time through. You know how to do it. We did already. And this, this one, you got a few different ways to do it. First one is don't do it. Just skip it. Second way of doing it is do it exactly like last time. 
The third way, move with breath, move with intention, not using momentum, not using gravity, but using intention, focus, muscular strength, quiet mind. If you're with me, on the inhale, tilt your tailbone up. Exhale, step or hop to Uttanasana. Inhale, glance forward. Exhale, fold. Arms wide, flat spine, inhale, rise. Reach high, back bend if you wish. Exhale, fold, chest, head low. Inhale, glancing forward. Exhale, plank, lower with control. Inhale, that back bend, cobrasana. Exhale, make your way, pressing up and away to down dog asana. Mm. Now, look, I have really no way of knowing if you're truly warm or not, but there's no worries. You have your boundaries. You know what they are. You understand moderation, gentleness, acceptance. So even if you're not totally warm, you can practice because you have some tools that will apply to benefit you. So let's go ahead and get going with this thing. How about take your right hand, bring it around behind your back with the palm away. That you're going to set the back of your hand on your spine, maybe up between your shoulder blades. Now, just begin. If you like, you can stay like this. But if you like, start lifting your left leg up. So, you know, it's like a two-legged dog. We call it supreme balancing. So left hand is on the mat, the right foot is on the mat, and the other stuff is not on the mat. And it's still a down dog shape, not a plank. And we just kind of hang out here. It's a little challenging, but, you know, we can stay calm because we're safe. One more breath here. First thing that lowers is your leg, left leg, then bring right hand back to down dog. Ooh, left hand. Reach back and grab the outside of your right knee. Yeah, we're going to do a little upper body strength for a few moments. No big deal. Now, without compromising your dog, without fidgeting, shifting, just to go deeper, begin to bring your left hand down the outside of your right leg to an appropriate degree. It goes towards the ankle. Doesn't mean it makes it to the ankle. It might stay at your knee. <clears throat> and notice you kind of feel like you're shifting to the right a little bit. Push into your right palm, push your right hip up and away, and then just use a little bicep strength. Bending your left elbow, you can take a twist here. Take a look up underneath your, your right armpit. You don't have to, it's just, just an option. Yeah. Ooh. Go ahead and bring your left hand back to down dog. Now, leaning a little more weight into your left foot. Inhale. Bring your right leg up behind you. They say three-leg dog. Let an exhale. Bend your right knee, bringing your right heel towards your left glute. And just open up your, your hips. Pressing more into right hand or left hand so we're not collapsing. Try to lift your right knee. Your pelvic floor spreading, undercarriage getting a stroke here. Good. One more breath. Now, exhale. Crunch your right knee down and across your body towards your left elbow. And let's just kind of hold it there and consider what the heck is keeping it there. What muscle is that? But wait, there is more available if you wish. Extend and straighten your right knee. Set the outer right foot on the floor outside of the left edge of your mat. Roll your left foot flat. Ground your left heel. Lean into your right hand. And as you breathe in, open your left hand up to the sky. There's a lot of words for this. A fallen star, fallen tribe, fallen this, or just kind of side balancing in a creative way. And if you feel really precocious, just lift your right foot off the mat with some inner thigh strength. One more breath. Exhale, left hand comes back to the mat, and then inhale, take right leg back up behind you. Three leg dog. As you breathe out, bend your right knee, 
Open your right hip over your left hip. We were here before, but let's, let's do something a little more. Leaning into weight into your left hand, continue to roll around and bring your right ball of your right foot down. You'll probably land outside the left edge of your mat. You kind of roll in your chest over almost towards ceiling. And your right hand is reaching to where the front wall meets the ceiling. Press into your feet. Little core strength. Lift heart. Lift torso. Reach hand. And exhale here. One more breath. Exhale. Sweep your right hand all the way back around. Inhale. Right leg up. Three leg dog. Exhale, right knee to right tricep, and just scooch it up as high as you please. It might be touching the tricep, or it might be hovering. Now, you can hang out here and consider triangles, muscles, or just watch breath. But for a little something else, flatten your left foot, ground your left heel, and on the inhale, just open your left hand to the sky, and, and yeah, your knee is still up by your right tricep. It's kind of creative, right? What the heck is that? One more breath. Exhale, left hand back to the mat. Right knee still at tricep. If you want it, you can inhale, bend elbows, touch chin. Now exhale, straighten arms, press. Ooh, enough of that nonsense. Inhale, take right leg up, three leg dog. Now exhale, step your right foot up between your hands. With the control, we're not just flopping it. We're, we're using intention, choosing to move. So, lower your left knee to the mat. Use your left toes to start walking it back as you bring your right arm inside of your right knee, right foot, right shin. Yeah. Good. Now, if you wish, come on down to forearm. So just playing with Uthe Prisasana, a little lizard action. Now, with your knee, left knee back to where you're feeling upper thigh, top of your left foot, release to the mat if you wish. Press into the top of your left foot, straighten your left leg, and so left knee comes up off the mat a little bit. Feel something there. It might be appropriate to let your right knee fall open and come up on the outside of your right foot. Yeah, that's kind of nice, huh? Now, here's a, a little something else. Lower your left knee. Now, bend your left knee so your left heel starts coming towards your left glute. And rotate your chest to the right wall. Reach your right arm back and get a hold of a foot or an ankle or something. And maybe you can use your right arm to... Get an extra stretch in your left quadricep. You know, try gently pulling heel towards glute. You find a spot that it says that's enough. That's where you park. There's no need to go beyond more. Remember, sensation starts the process. If you're feeling it, it works. Release your left foot back to the mat. Bring your hands right back around front. Good. Come up on palms and tuck your left toe under. Lean into your left hand and on big breath of air, open your right hand up to the sky. You've got your chest facing your inner right thigh. Yeah. So a little push in the left hand, a little reach out of right hand. And again, you can flirt with opening your chest if it feels nice. Like, like we're just spreading nipples to point opposite directions, pulling shoulder blades together. Might feel pretty good. One more inhale. Exhale, bring your right chest over your right thigh. Arms are out like wings, a little balance lunge here. And I didn't say on your right thigh, just over, hover over your right thigh. As you inhale, sweep arms wide towards the top, over your top of your head. All 10 fingertips touch at top of inhale. Exhale, sweep your arms back like jet airplane. Oh my goodness. Now inhale, come on up, torso up, arms up. It's called crescent pose. And as you exhale, just push your left hip forward, your left heel back, and bend your right knee as much as you like without bending your left knee. One more breath in. Exhale, bring your right hand around behind you, grab the outside of your left thigh, 
Left hand is still up there on its wholesome. Look up at it, and on an inhale, reach where back wall meets ceiling. Try to straighten your left leg, right knee bent. Move left hand and right knee away from each other. Through exhale here, one more big breath. How many triangles are you making? Exhale, ride your exhale. Left elbow comes across your right thigh. Mm. Palms go together towards the heart. They might not be at your heart, they just where they are. Now just use a couple exhales and inhale, pull, stall, and ribs away from pelvis. And exhale, press right palm into left palm and get a little twist. You can enhance twisting too by pushing in the right heel and pressing in the left toes. What's that going on? One more breath here. Exhale all the way out. Mm, now calmness, steady. Inhale, come right back up the crescent like it ain't no big deal. Exhale, bring both hands down to the mat on either side of your right foot with a little control. Ground your left heel once again so that the sole of left foot is like suction cup. Push your right knee forward so it's just jutting out, just beyond your right arm. Now, you can be like, forget it, Steve. I'm putting my forearm on my thigh, and you'd be okay with that. That'd be great. You can have your hand on a block. That's okay, too. But wherever you're at, just start to open your left hand up, up to the sky. Now, if your right hand is down on the mat or down on a block, start contracting, pressing outer right knee into your right arm. Press your right your arm into your outer right knee. You can create a little isometrics there or fire, pop-ups. Begin to press the sole of your left foot into the mat. Drop your left bicep over your left ear. Start reaching your left fingers to the front of the room and please breathe steady. And then finally, while you're doing all this, there might be some more. Try to rotate your left thigh and your left chest open towards ceiling. Just a couple breaths here. And if this ain't enough, if you wish for a little more, you can start reaching your right arm forward, right bicep under right ear. It's not for everybody, but if you got to have it, it's there for you. How about another breath in? Still reaching, a little bit of heat. And exhale, right hand back to the mat, down by right foot. Inhale, left hand straight back up. Exhale, put your left hand down on the mat. You come up on left toes, lower your left knee. Let the, <coughs> pardon me, begin to straighten your right leg as you pull your hips back over your left knee. It's called half a split or what is that other one? Ardha Hanumanasana. But here, try this. Can, can you pull your right knee straight rather than push it straight? Yeah, and maybe walk your hands forward as you're pulling your breastbone towards the toe, big toe of your right foot. Just a little lengthening of the spine, and you find appropriate length, you'll know, you'll feel it, and then just use an exhale to kind of fold into your right thigh. I don't know, I just kind of had a feeling that it was an appropriate time to release your right quadricep, yeah? Now, come on back up. Right leg is still straight. Put a little bend in your right knee so the right foot is flat on the mat. Straighten your left leg and ground your left heel. Now straighten your right leg. So both legs are straight. You're folding over your left thigh. It's called a pyramid. Parsvatanasana. Some refinements here. Press left hip forward, right hip back. Adjust the distance of your left foot that's appropriate for you. Now let an inhale pull your breastbone towards your right big toe, just like before, right? And then an exhale kind of melt into your right thigh with your torso. Good. Now on a block or on the mat, you put your left hand somewhere below your left shoulder, ground it somewhere in that vicinity. Put your right hand on your right hip and begin to open your chest and torso towards the right wall. Let's establish the twist. Lengthen with inhale, pull skull and ribs away from pelvis. 
rotate with exhale, soften into a twist. Really do like exhales. Once you find your rotation, your parvita, take your right arm on up if it's appropriate. And then just begin to press in the soles of feet and see what that's like. Again, left hip pressing forward, right hip pressing back, lengthening the spine in any way you can conceive of. And if you want to, if you want to challenge balance a little bit, just you can take a look at your right thumb. One more breath. Exhale, right hand comes on down, takes a hold of your right ankle, put your left hand on your left hip, and start to open your torso to the left wall. Once you have that rotation, hips, chest, shoulders, kind of square to left wall, open your left hand up to the sky. You know, trikonasana is there's like three immediate triangles I can think of, but there may be more. So while you're here, we can do some stuff. You can take your left hand behind your back, palm away, and try to grab the top of your right thigh with the left fingertips. You might not be able to grab it, but I, I'm pretty sure everybody can try. And if you don't reach the thigh, just grab some pants or a shirt and just use the back of your left arm, left wrist, kind of like an arm bar in your lumbar. The pressed pelvis towards that wall you're staring at. Draw shoulder blades towards the wall that you're not staring at. Pull, ribs, skull, pelvis away from each other. It's called traction. Left hand goes back to the sky. And then we can just drop. If you want, you don't have to. We can drop our left bicep over our left ear. Start reaching fingertips towards the front wall. It's a udita, extended. That's kind of nice. So we can just get a nice stroke down the left side of the body. So much core stuff happening here. Hip stuff, leg stuff, a whole lot of quiet mind. But if this isn't enough for you, just go ahead and reach your right arm towards the front wall as well. We've got a bicep by each year. We're lengthening. Now, that's going to be a whole lot of course. So three. One more big breath in. How many triangles you got going right now? Exhale. Put your right hand down, left hand up. Hmm. On inhale, rotate your torso parallel to the mat, squared over right thigh, arms out like wings. Ugh. Take a flight over your straight right leg. Now come up on left toes, just lift your left heel, left toes are down. Put a slight bend in your right knee as you breathe in and breathe out. Stand up into your right leg, left leg lifted behind you and it's your degree, it's personal. Two inches off the mat, maybe you make your way to where it's parallel. And while you're taking a flight, just lengthen things out. A slight chin touch for long neck. Breastbone pulling away from pubic bone for the rest of your spine. Fingertips reaching away from each other. Squeezing shoulder blades together. There's some sensation. All right. Let's do something else before this gets boring. Put your right hand on the mat or a block somewhere below your right shoulder. Left hand on left hip and just start to open your torso towards that left wall. This is the same thing as the prior pose, right? We just now we got a leg up in the air. It's not really that much different. How many triangles? If you want, you can start reaching left hand towards ceiling, spreading open, lengthening wingspan here. Ooh. The left leg is as high as you like it to be. It's personal, it's gentle, it's moderate. Ooh. Now, Yoga teachers like to talk about alignment, proper alignment. I have no idea you know, what in the hell is proper alignment, but here's some ideas. With your right hand kind of in line, aligned with your right foot, balance becomes very challenging. Take it off alignment of right foot. It's a little more stable. You can concentrate more on lengthening, strengthening, but it's up to you. You know your alignment. There ain't a yoga teacher in the world that knows proper alignment for you because they don't feel you. One more breath. Exhale. Try not to touch the mat. Rotate back to airplane balance. Arms wide. Left leg lifting to personal degree. One more breath. Exhale. Left hand finds the mat somewhere below your left shoulder. Right hand on right hip. And then just kind of start to establish the parvita, the revolve, the rotation. As you start to point heart towards right wall, you find appropriate degree of rotation that feels right for you. Right hand can maybe reach for the ceiling. 
it's really not important to reach your right hand up. It looks kind of cool. It will get some length. It will touch some shoulder blade muscle. You can keep it on your hip. It's all good, baby. Just breathe. Feel. Mm. Now, again, try not to touch the mat. Just lift your left fingers off and take a breath back to that airplane balance. But this time it's called ass awesome. So you just had everything, all those tissues on right ass. One more breath. Exhale, hands to the mat, let your head rest. Inhale, notice the left leg still lifting, oh my God. Exhale, set your left foot down next to your right foot. Take a breath in and glance forward, lengthen your spine. Breathe out, plant your palms, step or quietly hop the plank. Same exhale, lower with control, Ooh, just so strong. Breathe into your back bend, mm, gentle and free. Breathe out, press away into down dog. Ah, a couple breaths here. And check in. Are your teeth touching? What does your jaw feel like? Does it have a little sensation like at some point it was clenching in the last few minutes? Just take a little note. And if you notice some things like, oh, I'm not so calm, that's okay. Say, oh, that's all right. They can take a few breaths and find calm again. There's no need to, to judge or but beat self up, it's all good. All right, if you're with me, let's do this thing here. Take your left hand around behind your back, but the palm is away. And remember, we're gonna to try to swiggle the back side of your left hand up between shoulder blades or close to. Good. Now you got that left hand up there. If you wish, Begin to lift your leg up behind you. Pardon me while I move the spider outside, breathing. So our right hand is down. It's our left leg lifting. Thank you for your patience. Breath is steady. And, and the, the instinct is try to turn it into a plank. But let's try to keep the dog. All right, first things first, as we come out, we lower our leg first, then we bring the hand back to the mat. Now with your right hand, just reach back across your body, get a hold of the outer left knee. And then remember keeping, keeping a dog that feels stable, not kinked, start to run your, your right hand down the outside of your left leg to a personal degree, to your spot. And then if you wish, a little bicep strength to bend your right elbow, you can take a look up under your left armpit. Yeah, good. Bring right hand back to down dog. Leaning some weight into your right foot. Inhale, left leg up behind you. Trace legged dog. Breathing out, bend your left knee. And start bringing left heel towards right glute. You see how the leg kind of pops up like dog in a fire hydrant? See if you can bring your knee up a little, adjust the angle and the width to where you feel something there. Again, I, you got to find that. I can't take you there. One more breath. Now exhale. Crunch your left knee down and across your body through your right elbow or towards it. And just for a moment, Hover that sucker there, kind of contemplate what the hell is holding my knee here. I don't ever use that muscle. Now you can continue to hold knee there and think about it, or you could start to straighten your left knee, set your outer left foot outside the right edge of your mat, leaning into your left hand, and you can ground your right heel, right foot flat, breathe in, open the right hand up to the sky. Remember, falling star. Funky sidearm balance, variation on side plank, and for a little more sweetness, if you wish, just use your inner left thigh and lift your leg up a little so the foot comes off the ground. One more breath. Exhale, right hand down the mat. Inhale, leg back up behind you. Now breathe out and bend your left knee again, starting to open the, the undercarriage by bringing left hip over, right hip, left knee opening up. But let's continue while breathing to just flip the dog. You just open up and roll it open as your left foot comes down outside right edge 
to mass. Chest is up and your left hand is reaching to the front of the room, lengthening as much as you can. Open, start pressing in the feet and use some core strength to lift heart, lift torso, opening up. Flip dog, wild thing, or I don't know, just kind of this like almost wheel pose. One more breath in. Exhale, sweep your left arm back around to the mat and then inhale your left leg up once again, the three-legged dog. And then ride your exhale, left knee towards left tricep. And you know, you can say, forget it on any of these things, take a little break. But if you're with me, holding left knee close to left tricep, lean into left palm, ground the right foot, then an inhale will open your right hand to the sky. Yeah. This particular arm balance will start to help you develop a flying lizard. But not today. Take a breath. Exhale, right hand back to the mat. You can stay here, or if you wish, breathe in. Bend elbows, touch chin to the mat. Breathe out, press. Oh my God, what was that? Inhale, left leg up to the sky. Exhale, step left foot through with just some control, some intention. Mm. Lower your right knee to the mat. And then just bring your left arm inside of your left leg. Use your left toes to walk, or your right toes to walk your right knee back. So you're looking to find sensation in top of your right thigh. You know that, that area there, and you feel some psoas. Good. And once you get it there, you can release the top of your right foot to the mat. And you can come down on forearms if it's, if it's appropriate. Don't have to, you can stay on palms. And if you have your right leg lengthened to where you feel feeling pretty good about it, if you wish, begin to press into the top of your right foot. Straighten your right leg, knee comes off. There you go, the little touch to so as. I mean, really, how often do we access that thing? We use it all the time, but when do we ever take care of it? Pretty important, holds the upstairs and downstairs together. You can go ahead and let your knee come down. You can let your your left knee fall open. Remember, you come up on the outside edge of your foot. In this case, it'd be your left foot. And then bending your right knee, your right heel starts coming towards your right glute. You just lean into your right palm or forearm, depending on what's on the ground and reach your left hand back and take a hold of something. And now your strong left hand, strong left arm can begin to explore some more lengthening of the quadricep. The goal is not to put your heel on your ass. That is not the goal. The goal is to find the sweetness of the stretch in your quadricep. Heel goes wherever the heck it goes. It don't matter where it goes. It's a feel that. Like. Now let's release, release the, the right leg back flat down. Arms come back inside the leg and you just push up on palms. Yeah. Tuck right toes under, straighten right leg so the knee is off. Leaning into your right hand, inhale, left hand up. So we got a little twisted lunge here. Looks kind of like a dragonfly. Yeah. We can explore opening here by, by just bringing fingertips towards where wall meets ceiling back there behind you. And you'll notice the chest spreading, pressing vigorously into right palm keeps your shoulder out of your ear, ear so you can hear me because I say some really interesting things not really take another breath exhale bring your left hand down so your left pectoral is hovering over your left thigh arms are out like wings remember balance lunge on an inhale sweep arms out and forward top of your inhale all 10 fingertips touch Exhale, use lat muscles to sweep your arms back like you're moving through quicksand. With calmness, inhale, come on up, torso and arms, press and pose. And as you exhale, just press your right hip, square your right hip forward as you push your right heel away. And I know the bottom of your right foot ain't straight up and down. No worry, no yoga journal photographers are here. Feel the back of your leg length. Yeah. Use the bend of your left knee to see how close you can bring your right knee to the ground without bending. One more big inhale. Exhale, sweep your left arm around behind you and with the fingers of your left hand, take a hold of your outer right thigh. Your right hand is still up there on its lonesome, so just take a breath to get it a little higher, a little lengthening. 
and exhale. Maybe you start reaching right hand towards where back wall meets ceiling. Lengthening, pushing your right hip forward, your right heel away. And just find something here. How about moving right, left knee and right hand away from each other? One more big breath. Now exhale, swoop your right elbow across your left thigh. Just bring your palms together. Yeah, maybe in front of your heart. Maybe not. Maybe it's in front of um, chest. And I'll just use a few breaths to, to exhale into this twist. Remember, you can push palm into palm. You can press into your left heel and your right toes. You feel that little hip adjustment there? It'll enhance your twist. You know how inhales pull skull and ribs away from pelvis? Ooh. Now, here we go. Calmness being tested. Here comes a challenge in life. Oh, no. Take a big inhale as you come up calmly to crescent pose. Exhale. Put your hands down on the mat. Ground your right heel. Your left hand is down next on the outside of your left foot. Maybe it's up on a block. Or maybe you're like, no, Steve, I like my arm on my thigh. It's okay, too. Just take a breath as you open your right hand up high. Now, we know what this is, extended side angle, right? Or bent knee triangle. Or just touching some muscles in the largest parts of my body. Thighs, glutes, core. If your hand is down on block or floor, you know the drill, man. You know what to do. Arm and leg pressing against each other. And no force or aggression. Just create some contact and a little contraction. Pressing the sole of right foot in the mat. Again, we're not trying to break the floor. Just feel in inner, inner right thigh. So drop right bicep over right ear and start reaching fingers as you try to roll right quadricep and right chest open. So like everything is a very, very basic pose, but on the edges, touching the edges, and you're hitting everything in the body as the flames of tapas ignite. It's discipline, breathe. Mm. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bring your right hand back up high. Inhale, try to spread open as you open your right arm. Exhale, bring your right hand down to the mat. Come up on right toes, lower your right knee. And let's straighten our left leg by pulling left hip back rather than pushing forward. Just straighten it by with pulling. So again, we got a half split. And as you inhale, you can pull your breastbone towards your left big toe. As you exhale, you just start walking hands. Because some of y'all might get to where you use your right hand to grab the inside of the left foot and kind of pull back gently for an Achilles touch, a calf touch, pack of knee touch. Even, some of you may even end up down on your elbows, your forearms here with both hands on your foot. Using a little arm strength to lengthen your spine. But it is very personal. Now just walk hands back. Put a, a little bend in your left knee. As you straighten your right knee, ground your right heel. Now straighten your left leg. See, we're right back in pyramid. And just a moment here, as you push left hip back, right hip forward, and inhale, pull the breastbone towards the same foot as before, and then you just breathe out and melt into your left thigh. And maybe you're starting to see this. This has nothing to do with your body. This is all about facing challenges, vicissitudes, with calmness, with steadiness, without reacting impulsively, mindlessly. Now, Right hand is go on the mat, somewhere below right shoulder. Left hand on hip, and just start to establish your rotation as you open your chest to left wall. Yeah, left hip is still pushing back. Right hip is still pushing forward and accessing something downstairs there. And if it's appropriate, now you can go ahead and take your left hand up. If appropriate, it's not required. Just feel. Ooh. One more breath. How about bring your left hand on back down to the mat? No, bring it down to left ankle if it's appropriate. And you know, you could have it up high on left shin. That might be all right. 
Maybe you do have it down on the ground. Start to open your chest towards the right wall, right hand on right hip, and then once you have your rotation, it's shoulders, torso squared the right wall, then we take the right hand up. We can do some strength stuff here. Let's say you got left hand on left ankle. Push your left hand into your left ankle. Reach your right hand up, 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 up. There's a little action there, right? Dropping right hand behind back, palm facing away. See, just see where you can get your fingertips. Can you catch a hold of the upper thigh? If not, just grab a hold of Lululemons. Just something. Just try. All benefit comes from effort, from trying, not from acquisition. Now, back of your right arm can kind of press pelvis forward, shoulders come on back. Now, here's something. Roll your right shoulder back, but how about this? Also, roll your left shoulder back. Holy smokes, what was that? Now, bring your right arm back up. And if you wish, you go uh, with Dita. Bring right bicep over right ear, fingertips trying to tickle the front wall, yeah? And for the very few adventurous ones, if you wish, reach your left hand towards the wall as well. Oh, my God. One big breath. Exhale, left hand back to left leg, right hand to the sky. One inhale, spread your chest open. Exhale, rotate your torso. Square to the mat, arms out like wings. Come up on right toes. Inhale, slight bend of left knee. Exhale, stand up in the left leg. We go flying. I'm going to fly over Castroville, Texas. Where are you flying today? Uh, just, just expose whatever you can. Remember, yoga turns on the lights. How do we turn on the lights? Well, we can open some space by extending and lengthening. We can bring our awareness into that space to a whole lot of calmness and just indulge in sensation. Mm. Now, how about the five fingertips of your left hand? Let's take it down to the mat somewhere under your left shoulder. You can put your right hand on your right hip as you start to rotate open here, right hip over left hip, right shoulder over left shoulder. It might be appropriate to now reach your right hand to the sky. Just Lengthening out. Remember this scan for available spaces. Use a little a little strength to open these spaces, a little calmness to dwell in the spaces. Remember alignment. If you align your hand with your foot, it's more of a challenge to balance. But if you take it off alignment, it's a little more stable. You can explore some other things. One more breath. Exhale, trying not to touch anything, rotate back to airplane balance. Just for a moment, take an inhale. And now exhale your right hand down to the ground, somewhere under your right shoulder, left hand on left hip, and begin to establish the rotation of the arm reach down. So you pretty much got your left heart, your heart facing the left wall of your left heart. That's funny. And if it's cool, now just take your, your left hand up to the sky. And while you're here, I might notice that a knee bent. Can you straighten it? What happens there? What does that feel like? One more big breath. Now, as you breathe out, rotate back to airplane balance, or in this instance, ass asana. Big breath, lengthen and lift. Exhale, hands to the mat, head rests low. Inhale, man, my right leg is still lifting. Exhale, set your right foot down next to your left foot. Oh, thank God. Inhale, glance out, lengthen. On your exhale, pop up on your toes, bend your knees, and sit on your heels. Yeah, cool. Ooh. Now from here, how about put your palms on your thighs if it's appropriate, shoulders over hips, tall spine, slight chin tuck for long neck. We're just gonna take care of our feet. They serve us so well, let's give them some love here. Now this is kind of groovy. If you like, you can open your knees away from each other. Heels are gonna slide into a very personal place. That's, a, that's an option available for you. 
If you like, put your palms together at your heart. <clears throat> now, if your knees are open, go ahead and just use a little strength. Palms together at your heart. Use a little strength to draw your knees back together. And then interlace your fingers, flip your palms as you reach your arms up and inhale and just start separating hands and tailbone. Just a couple breaths here, reaching, traction, mm, no reaction. One more breath. Exhale, bring your hands to the mat in front of you. Straighten your legs, drop your heels, put your nipples on your knees and let your head hang low. Oh. Let's um. Let's heel toe our feet apart so they're a little wider than hips. Um, put a slight bend in your knees. Um, let's do this one this way. That about your first two fingers. Hook them around big toes. You got a little bend in the knees so, so you can access it. And then straighten spine out, but let's get your arms, your arms, elbows straight. Just begin to straighten your knees to personal degree moderation now with fingers bound straighten your elbows inhale glance forward think of cow pose here like lengthen out now exhale keep the length and use bicep strength bend your elbows and pull your long torso towards your thighs moderate with some sensitivity hyper gentle you hear these words hyper gentle sensitive moderate gentle I mean, come on, y'all got to know what we're doing here outside of the pose, outside of the physical. You know what's going on. I know you do. Feeding, benevolence, cultivating. Ooh. Let go of toes, hands down low. Inhale, glance forward. Exhale, palms to the mat. Step or quietly hop the plank and lower with control. Ooh. Inhale to Cobra. Exhale to Down Dog. Last Down Dog of the day. So get it while you can. Indulge. Yeah, I like a little hip opening. I can dig it. Maybe we didn't get enough shoulders. We had to push a little more. Take a breath now. Exhale, lower knees to the mat. Cross your shins deeply behind you. Push back to your butt. And then just put the soles of your feet together. Let your knees fall open. A butterfly, Nasana, or just sitting there holding my feet while my knees spread wide. Tall spine, lift breast bone up and, up and forward. Tuck your chin just a little bit. How about engage some toilet muscles right here? Take another breath in with all of this luxurious length. Bend your elbows and bring your torso forward. Let's think forward rather than down. Yeah, it's going down. Let's keep this length. Take another breath, lengthen out. And then if you got it, just exhale and bend elbows a little more. And maybe your elbows are helping push in the thighs a little bit, but keep the length and take one more breath. And now you can exhale, drop your head, and maybe round the back a little. Ooh. Yeah, we got the got the body warm and heated, and all those things touched. Now we're just gently walking it home, step by step, every moment a little closer to the peak pose. Now come on back up. Bring knees together and then just set your legs out in front of you straight out. And uh, I got a thing for spine lengthening or something. Let's put palms on the mat right outside of our hips. That bony protuberance of hips, greater trochanter. Let that touch your inner forearms or your, your forearms. Palms are down, fingers forward. Press into your palms. And just, you're just going to let your butt come off the mat, maybe a centimeter. Just clear a little space so that the weight of your pelvis lengthens your spine. Chin slightly tucked. Yeah. Now set your butt down. Reach your arms straight forward, parallel to legs. 
And then just come down to your back, one vertebrae at a time with control. Uh, we did so much core in those triangles and half moons. And so one last gentle touch to the core. Make your way flat to the mat. Once you're there, hug your knees in. And I, I really don't think we need a twist here. I mean, how many twists did we do? One, two, I'm not counting. There was a lot of twists. If you need a twist, though, you take it. That's okay. But if you're with me, if you're not twisting, hug knees in. Get a good, appropriately tight grip for what you need. See if you can bring your cheekbones towards your knee bones. And I'll start to engage. I don't think we missed anything, but just in case, start to contract everything you can imagine. Um, toes and feet and shins and calves and, and thighs. And again, toilet muscles, belly muscles, nipple muscles. Pull your ears back against your skull, but don't grit your teeth. That's the only muscle to keep loose. Jaw. Mm. With all that engagement, full, huge inhale, like big bong hit. Breathe in. Now exhale, release, extend, and melt into a savasana. Mm. You know, you spent about 67 minutes preparing for this, so indulge. I get every bit of it. Hang out for a while. And for the first time in class, just let your breath go back to normal. No more intentional focused breathing. Just let it on upon it, just natural. Turn your attention no longer to breath. Laser like focus on that steady stream of tingling sensation in your body. Hmm. Said so you did the work, now enjoy. I will leave you with your breath. I offer to each of you my gratitude and my love. Om Shanti. 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 Shanti.